All right, so we're going to be trying this a new way. I am fast forwarding all of the footage and basically just going to be doing a voiceover of all the little important things that I was saying throughout the whole video. So I got an LG 48 CX. I got it because there is no HDMI 2.1 monitor that has, you know, HDR 1000. I know the OLED doesn't have HDR 1000, but I wasn't spending 2500 on HDMI 2.0 monitors with G-Sync modules in them that have fans. I don't want a fan in my monitor. And then we have the new monitor just came out, which is an Asus PG 32 UQX and initial reports said that it had HDMI 2.1. It also cost $6,400, but it ended up turning out that it doesn't even have HDMI 2.1. So what are you paying for? It's too much money for something that is a already outdated and obsolete product. So next year probably ces actually you know what no they said that monitor will be available january 2021 so ces 2022 you can finally get 4k 144 hertz without using dsc display stream compression if i'm purchasing something that much money no i'm getting full bandwidth buddy nope 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 you don't charge that much money still has the fan in it now back to the people who are gonna say oh you're crazy you got a 48 inch monitor that has an oled panel that will result in burning well i have you know i will take my chances with burning over spending let's do the math what was this panel so if you don't get a sale, a 48 CX is about $1,500. Now, if you pick it up on sale, like I did, it's like $1,449. And you know, there are some deals going around where you can get it with like a five year warranty for square trade with it. And if you get that, of course it doesn't cover burning, but it's gonna cover if the panel doesn't turn on, if, I don't know, like some hardware goes bad in it. Little things. But when it comes to burn in specifically, they will not cover that. So you're going to have to go through LG and they'll help you out. Hmm. Besides that, like I said, I got it on sale around $1349. All right. That other monitor. The Asus PGU, no, hold on. Asus PG 32 UQX. Now that one is, let's pop out the calculator. So I said 6,400, right? Now we'll divide that by what I paid to solve pre-tax, 1349.99. And that's 4.740775857590. So we round this to about 4.74. So. I could get four of these and we'll we'll just we'll just exclude that point seven. Alright? So I could get this monitor on this television every year for four years in a row, have it die or break it, and it would still be a better value than purchasing that one panel. Now that's not gonna happen. I've had a 55 inch C8 for two years and yes, I do use it as a television, but I've used it as a monitor for multiple occasions. As a main, I usually hop back and forth. And once again, somebody's gonna say, oh, that's ridiculous, preposterous even. A 55 inch panel at 4K is only four 1080p 27 inch monitors put together in a two by two array with no bezel. It is not ridiculous or preposterous, right? It is actually usable. Now, 
if you want a sharper PPI, right? All right, well then I can understand. So when it comes to, let's see, a 48 inch is basically four 1080p 24 inch monitors in a two by two array with no bezel. Once again, picture quality of an OLED. I, I didn't want to have two OLEDs. It's, it's stupid. Why would I have two? But after getting this, it's kind of cheating because the voiceover is done, you know, a while after. But I'll probably include more once the setup is done. But this has probably been about a week and it's been a really good week. So I have the picture quality from the C8. Now, when it comes to PX has the same picture quality, but what's very impressive is it has G-Sync. Yep, G-Sync is on the back of it and on the box. This is my first, eh, my second G-Sync compatible monitor. So the first one was the Strix XG17. There's no module on that FreeSync compatible. I wasn't sure if I was going to go AMD, but once again, this is FreeSync compatible. And it works pretty good. I did have to do the firmware update for the Korean firmware that they released. I downloaded it, put it on a flash drive, flashed it. G-Sync on RTX 30 series Ampere GPUs. I was having flicker, but once I flashed it, it was fine. Um, people have said that there is still stutter. Um, it, it's there, I wanna say. It's not perfect. But I'm, I'm only saying that because I've seen slow-mo clips. When I play, it, you, you really don't notice it. Like, and I'm, I've been using G-Sync hardware-based module monitors since 2017. So, pre-patch, unusable. G-Sync does not work. Post-patch, it works well. Very well. Now, if they can perfect it so you can't pick it up on a slow-mo, then yeah, that would be fantastic. And that's what they should do. I refused to buy this until there was a fix. The second I heard there was a fix from, uh, come on, what's his name? I, uh, HDTV test or something like his channel is. And then there was uh, another one, uh, Stop the FOMO. Who else is there? Uh, come on. The, the TV dudes. So, I, I like both of them. But I have no compression issues. It's full HDMI 2.1. And then when it comes to 48 gigabits per second versus 40 gigabits per second, like speeds. Did I get gigabyte and gigabit mixed up? I don't remember. So, you have... Yeah, you're not getting the full bandwidth like on the C9. But... The panel is only 10 bit. It's fine. It, it's it. You're you're not gonna gain anything pushing 12 bit color at this thing, and it's not a 12 bit color panel. Like it, it's it doesn't matter. So LG did whatever with the eight other gigs, and they're using it for their AI engine uh, optimize. I I used to use the AI sound thing. It was cool, but um, yeah, I just use game now. It just it sounds better and I use the Adobe Atmos in Windows and it, it's really nice um, I don't know how well this is being picked up right now but I'm using a Yeti with Nvidia broadcast I actually had no idea that you had to install RTX voice I thought it was just already there because it was an option in discord but then they ended up making it a uh, I don't know you had to go install it separately so I I thought they just removed the logo, so you uh, still had it. I didn't know I had to go get it. But anyway, broadcast is even better, apparently. So I can be mashing on the keyboard, and it's still only picking up my voice. Uh, before, I had to type very slow, very quietly. This is fantastic. So, where was I? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to this. So, I am setting this TV up. And basically, I did not want to crack the panel. I was very scared. I wanted to be very careful because if I cracked it, I would be very upset. So 
I'm doing everything extra, extra, extra carefully. So like if you're careful doing something, extra, extra, like add two layers of extra because that's how scared I was. Now, after I've initially done it, I'm not scared because I know how to do it. But, you know, in the beginning, yeah, it's scary. So, once you get it out and you put the styrofoam wherever you put it, all you got to do is get the screws, the stand. You have to put that little lip in the front first and then put the screws in. I unfortunately did not do that, but you will see. And then I had to do it again. But anyway. When it comes to this television in particular, there is still no monitor that has HDMI 2.1 and, you know, supports consoles and has HDR. I, I had an ultra wide, all right? I'm one of those, oh, 21 by nine, I can never go back. Yeah. And I also understood all of the valid concerns from everybody saying, oh no, uh, dude, 48 inch monitor, you're crazy, dude. OLED burning, you're crazy, yeah. Thank you to everybody who said just do it because it is fantastic and the other monitors are garbage. The modern market is garbage. So until there's actual value, I mean, what do they add? You can get the new Acer 34 inch Predator monitor that's like G-Sync compatible, FreeSync, and they claim half a millisecond response time. And then it's uh, the same thing, 180 Hertz, wow jumped 60 hertz whoop de doo and then you can get a 200 hertz one and then i was really looking at the lg 38 gn 950 and i wanted that one specifically because there's an lg 38 gl 950 and that one has the g-sync module v2 in it which means that it has a fan now Here's what's stupid. It has an HDR 400 compatibility and it can overclock to, I think, 175 hertz or 180, something like that. It's only a little bit faster than, it's like 175 and you have to use chroma subsampling and then it's, your text looks bad and then it, it, you're not doing that every time. So here, here's the point. You're going to be running it at 8-bit, so I'm not getting the big color gains that I wanted to run it at 10-bit all the time. And it's only, okay, so 8-bit, now we jump up to 160 hertz. Okay, now we're matching the FreeSync compatible one, which is the GN model. The GN model also comes with a better stand, but I, I've mounted on the arm, doesn't matter. So, the real advantage to the GN is no G-Sync module and it has no fan in the monitor. I do not want a fan in my monitor. Um, you can laugh, but I put the PC in the closet so I don't have to hear it. I don't even own a hard drive in this computer room. So when it comes to having a fan in my monitor, you are absolutely insane if you think I'm going to have a fan in my monitor on my desk. So, yeah. I do have an air purifier in the room and I do have a air conditioner running in the background because it is, um, it was cold, now it's hot and then it's probably going to be cold again. Um, this is a pretty good test for RTX voice if it is not picking that up in the background because in pretty much all the other videos you can definitely tell. I I'm really shocked that nobody was super upset about that keyboard video where I left the fan on but it was it was really hot man. and. It kind of, the audio was kind of bad. I'm not even going to lie. And I was really shocked. No, nobody said like, oh, you know, very, very negative. You know, this is trash. It's <laughs> like the, the audio was bad. I, I forgot, but it was hot. So I had to leave it on. Otherwise, I just kind of do the record and then turn, turn, take a break, turn it back on, try to get cold again. And then, you know, do it again. But, I'm so, got this on the desk, and 
we're making progress, you know? I'm looking at a installation video of how somebody did it because I messed up that lip part. Mm. I only had one HDMI 2.1 cable at this point. It's one that I bought when I bought my... High speed 48... Oh, actually, my bad, my bad. It's a Belkin Ultra Speed, whatever they call the high speed. It basically, it can handle 48 gigabits per second. And it was only a, I believe, a two meter cable. Cost me about $30, I think. It was a recommendation from Mr. 4K Upscaler. Honestly, if it wasn't for him making those upload OLED videos every single day, constantly saying the OLED is the best, it has changed my life. Like, I probably wouldn't have commit. I looked, I, I saw some Vizios, and honestly, I don't think I could tell a difference like when looking at it from in a Costco. Okay, let's let's get that straight. N not when I put it in my face and I use it and I have it on my desk, then I can tell a difference. Okay, and the people who tell you there's no difference between 240 hertz and 280 hertz and 165 and 144, and oh, I don't see the difference and going from 144 to 240. Look, I... See, if I call them liars, that would be, you know, sort of like an attack. Um, maybe they can't see the difference, but for people that have a form of visual acuity, for people who uh, have the ability to perceive HDR, high dynamic range, for the people who have the ability to tell what a ripe fruit looks like and you know what organic apples look like versus normal and you could probably taste the difference yeah there's a difference um the people who don't buy it because they don't believe that it is worth the price increase then yeah i can understand that and that's justified now when it comes to outright saying there is no difference you don't feel a difference you don't see a difference Mm, no there's a difference okay now is it a scientific difference like oh this is only uh possible to see under a microscope or what is it called the oscilloscope or whatever to check the frame times and you can see the response but even though with the high speed cameras look long story short yes yes you, there is a difference i can feel the difference moving my mouse cursor the windows uh I, I feel the difference just moving the mouse cursor on the Windows desktop. Like, it's very simple. You will feel it. Maybe in the beginning, I didn't notice a difference when I played on my friend's PC versus playing Siege on my Xbox. But now, once you become accustomed to something, you can easily tell. It's like having battery life all day no charge and then all of a sudden you go to another phone and it's half the battery life and it's like oh i have to charge midday like you actually have to zero zero percent midday so you wake up you got work or whatever you got right now it's 1 a.m and my oh my god i i meant 7 8 a.m right and then basically you go all the way till about let's say 12 11 oh my god I'm, I'm all over the place look look we wake up 8 a.m battery life only reaches till let's say 2 p.m we have to full charge all right that's your break in work or whatever so you got fast charger luckily right 30 45 minutes full charge then from but let's say that 3 p.m we take it off the charger 3 p.m all the way till maybe 11 p.m you go to sleep and it lasts still there. Now, I don't know what you would be doing for the phone to die from literally 8 a.m. to 2 p.m., but that is a significant amount of time. Yeah, no charger. But see, that would be terrible. Terrible battery life, and that's something you can actually tell. So, 240 hertz, when I'm using my XG17 as a side monitor, which I do, along with this, 48 CX I absolutely can feel the difference and I'm like wow you know like the fidelity of the 48 CX and when you look at it and you're doing things on it it's fantastic but when I am if I loaded up 
here's an example. I loaded up Doom, 4K, HDR, 120 hertz, no compression, no nothing. Fantastic on the OLED, feels great, like it's fantastic. The C8 was missing G-Sync and 120 hertz at 4K. It is that clarity and that motion, it's just fantastic, like there's nothing, nothing that good. You have an OLED panel, which is the size of like two credit cards and then just glass. No matte, no anti-glare, no garbage interrupting you and the image. It is just clean, it is clear, it is beautiful, it is fantastic, that is it. Now, if you have issues with glare, great. Use blackout curtains. Use some form of light control. But when you, look, I have not calibrated this yet but I am used to using all of my monitors at 120 nits, 6500K uh, for the Kelvin for the, uh, no, 6500K for the color temperature, Gamma 2.2, and yeah. So I probably have to use HCFR or I'll use Kalman for home or something. I know how to make an SDR color profile for the I use display cal and I used an SDR cal uh, color. Oh, look, I calibrated the LG C8 in SDR with my display cal software, which is free, and a color monkey. And it, it, it came out well. It's just that it's difficult because even though you select the OLED settings, it'll keep, uh, it'll keep just it like varies up and down because the ABL ABL is when the brightness like varies up and down like it dims itself you know it's got like these burn-in preventing features so it, it's difficult I'm hoping Kalman for home or a software specifically to calibrating OLEDs would help make this a lot easier so Kalman for home is about $150 we'll, we'll see if it's worth I, I've seen some videos from people and they said it's totally worth and in the beginning, I could not stand using a color calibrated sRGB uh, monitor, I, like an IPS panel. But now, I can't use anything that is not color calibrated. So, and, and I do like the oversaturation and all that, but it's like, I like putting the setting on and then going back to what things are supposed to look like. Anyway. In the clip, probably going to just have it hop around. But the setup process is pretty good. We got it on the desk. Just have to hook up the HDMI 2.1. Uh, the problem was that the cable is only two meters. I have a standing desk and the PC is, like I said, in the closet. There is not enough space and there's not enough, uh, you know, there is space, but there's not enough like length. And right now, if I took that test bench and put it on the desk, there wasn't enough space. Because I have the two monitors still mounted on the desk behind the television. Because at this point in time, I'm not 100% sure if I am committed to this decision. I ordered it because you have extended holiday returns and I could try it out. But as, as you know, we are here, there is a video, and I'm telling you, I'm pretty happy with it. There will be a, like, actual review, but it's gonna come once I've had more time with it. So probably around a month-ish, maybe two months, but I also need the Ergotron HX arm to mount the television. And I was going to get my I have the audio engine A5s and I was going to get these little desk mounts so I can put the studio monitors on the left and right of the television but I wouldn't be able to use Dolby Atmos that way and I'm just so conditioned to monitor speakers being garbage that using the television speakers in this 48CX this close absolutely amazing all right, so I was a bit parched. I had to drink water and I had a meal, so now I can talk properly again. 
basically I'm going to be using the TV speakers and just be playing around like that. It's nice that the television will automatically switch to game mode. It will automatically go to Dolby Atmos. Um, can you tell a difference? Yeah, it's really nice for just software tweaks on a television speaker. So, um, I've, I've cut down like four hours of footage here to like barely 30, I mean, it's, it's around 30 minutes, it's close to 30 minutes and it is an hour or 45, so, yeah, I, I think this is pretty good, I like it. On the right side of the screen, you can see the undervolt that I was playing around with, and I was basically running COD in full screen 4K, I think low, maxed out. I played with it in 3840 by 1600. Same thing, G Sync, 10 bit, full color, no promo subsampling, BS, and 120 hertz, G Sync, all that, yeah. Then we had, I played around with the windowed mode you know, to replicate what it feels like to have a smaller monitor, like most people say, has to be mandatory. You can't go bigger. Absolutely impossible too big. The only argument that is valid is the PPI is not absolutely fantastic. So I have not used a 4K 27 inch panel yet, but 92 PPI, it's not bad, it's what most people use anyway, 1080p, 24 inch, and it's a better PPI than all of the people getting those 1080p, 24.5 inch, basically 25 inch, 360 hertz, 240 hertz panels, so, um, yeah, I think it's acceptable. Now, if you're comparing this to somebody who's a dev and has, you know, the 34 inch uh, MSI 5K, essentially ultra wide, yeah, well, you know, that's a bit difficult to compete with, you know, Apple XDR display, same thing. It's a bit difficult to compete with around that 200 plus API. I mean, my bad, PPI, API is software. So, it's pretty good, it's pretty good, it's acceptable, I mean, oh, also, disable clear type, it actually makes it worse, because it's optimized for text on a IPS display, and those sub-pixel layout is different than an OLED. Honestly, I ran 1440p on this, and it didn't look that bad, it's not like when a resolution is lower on a LCD panel, and it looks if you're not running native on an LCD, it looks atrocious. So, pretty good. And just 1080p on this XG17 I have looks fantastic. I wish everybody could have 240Hz or I wish at least 120 was the default. At least now with smartphones, we're seeing that. So, I, th I think that's pretty much it overall. First impressions, unboxing it, setting it up, putting the stand together. Um, I think it's pretty good. Like I said, once I get the stand, I mean my bad, once I get the arm and the mounting plate to put it onto the back and on an arm, and then I clean up my desk, I uh, get rid of these two other monitors I have because I don't need them. And I'll just have my XG17 on the side I move my PC around with me, XG17 obviously, I'm still waiting and looking for a good bag to put my PC and all this stuff in, obviously this giant television isn't going in a bag, otherwise I'd be like, oh man, what's that Greek guy, Sisyphus, Sisyphus, the guy who has to carry the boulder up the mountain, don't remember right now, but yeah, I'm not doing that. Mm. Yeah. There's no reason to keep going on. It's it's good. It's great. If you were thinking about it, go for it. If 
you aren't, you know, the market for this, um, you're going to be really happy in two years. So, yeah. That's pretty much it. Okay. Have a great day.